Leia here from LeiaVersailles.com and in this video we're going to look at enantiomeric excess or optical purity calculations. In the last video we discussed how to calculate specific and observed rotation and you can find that on my website along with the entire chirality video series practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting LeiaVersailles.com slash chirality. Before we look at the math what is enantiomeric excess or optical purity? We've already discussed that if you have a pure R or pure S sample, these are going to be optically active by turning light in one direction or the other. And if you have a racemic mixture, it'll be optically inactive because every molecule trying to turn light to the right will be canceled out by another one turning it to the left. But these are extremes, 100% R or 100% S versus 50% R, 50% S. But what happens if you have a sample that is not pure, but not quite 50-50? You're still going to have some optical activity, but it won't be quite as strong as the pure sample. Let's say the pure sample of some molecule has a specific rotation that is equal to positive 25. It turns light 25 degrees to the right, and that would be for the R enantiomer. And that means the S enantiomer should be equal to negative 25. If we mix them together, so that would be 50-50, R and S, we get an alpha that is equal to zero degrees because it doesn't turn in either direction. R and S cancel out. But then what happens if I give you a sample that has some mix of R and S, but the alpha comes out to be negative 12.5 degrees. That means it's turning to the left, but not quite as much as we would expect for a pure sample. Let's approach this from a logic perspective first, and then we'll look at the calculation. Sometimes on your exam, you're simply asked which one dominates R and S, and for that, you want to draw a quick mental map and say, if I have the extremes and zero is in the middle, negative 25 would be pure S, positive 25 would be pure R. If the observed rotation is somewhere in this direction at negative 12.5, it's halfway between racemic where they both cancel and pure where you have only S. So if we had to guess, we'll say, first of all, S definitely dominates. We have more S than R. And we probably have about 75% S and 25% R. This is helpful if you have a multiple choice question and you just need a direction where it's extremes or somewhere in the middle and you quickly rule out the R as being the dominant. But what if we want to know exactly how much before we go into the mathematical answer, let's take a look at what is happening. Say we have a solution where R is blue and S is green. And I want to find out the optical purity or enantiomeric excess. And in this solution, I have three blue and seven green. Purity means what is not canceled out by the other one. And excess means after everything is canceled out, it's what is left over. So optical purity and enantiomeric excess is kind of the same thing. The way I would figure this out is say that for every blue R, one green S cancels. So even though we have seven green and three blue, one green and one blue cancel, a second blue and green cancel, and a third blue and green cancel. There is no more blue to cancel the green, so anything that could have canceled was taken out of the way. That leaves us with one, two, three, four green left over with nothing to cancel. That means, going back to the polarimeter, if light is coming through this system, every time this blue one tries to rotate light in one direction, the green one rotates it back in the other direction. Every time this blue one tries to turn light, the green one cancels it out. Every time the blue one tries to turn light, the green one cancels it out. And then the remaining green, when they try to turn light, we have no more R to cancel it out because the R is completely outnumbered by S. And so the green will win and force light in the direction that they would typically go. 
but not quite as much because half the green or nearly half the green in this case we're not turning light to turn it but simply to undo what the R is doing so if we look at the excess in this case we have a total of 10 and that means 10 would equal to 100% of the solution but then in this specific solution 3 out of 10 is R that means we have 30% R 7 out of 10 or 70% S but for every R we need to cancel S so what did we do for every R we took one S we simply subtract and we say that if we have 7 total S but of the 7 we have to take out 3 because we have 3 R and we need to cancel that leaves me with a net of 4 S capable of doing S rotation. Your professors will show you different ways to calculate an antihumeric excess. I just like to go with high minus low because I don't want to deal with negatives if I don't have to. The higher percent, the greater concentration is S at 70% minus the lower concentration is 30% R, which leaves me with 40% enantiomeric excess or percent EE for enantiomeric excess. It's what remains of the enantiomer that we had more of to begin with. In this case, 40%. Another way to look at this is of the 70% S, 30% is not pure because it's canceling out R, but what's left over is pure S with nothing to battle, and that means we have an optical purity of 40% because that's what's left over and not rivaled by any leftover R. This was pretty simple, but what if you're asked this question in terms of observed rotation? Say you're given the observed rotation and you're told it should normally have a different value, how do you calculate it? Which brings us to the second of a tiny number of equations you have to know in organic chemistry, and that's as follows. Percent enantiomeric excess or percent purity is equal to alpha of the sample or alpha observed whatever you get out of your polarimeter divided by alpha of the pure solution since we're looking for a percent value we then multiply by hundred percent in our first example we are told that the alpha observed is equal to negative 12.5 degrees and the alpha pure was negative 25 degrees if we punch this into the calculator, we have negative 12.5 divided by negative 25. Notice that the negatives will cancel out and we get 0 0.5. But 0 0.5 is not a percent, so remember you have to multiply this by 100. And that gives me 50%. What is 50%? Enantiomeric excess. So don't think of this as 50% S, it's 50% extra of your S. So if we take the entire sample and set that to 100%, in that sample we have 50% pure S, and then the other 50% is going to be racemic. For a racemic mixture you have half and half, so that would be 25% R and 25% S. From this we can then get the total and say we have 25% S cancelling R, 50% S that is pure for a total of 75% S in solution, and of course 25% R in solution. Again, what did we do here? We figured out the percent optical purity or the percent enantiomeric excess, what is left over. After I compare the R and S that cancels out what is left over. We know that it's S because it's the same sign as pure S, so it has to be an excess of the S enantiomer, and that's 50% of the solution that is pure S with nothing to cancel out. 50% is pure S, what is the remainder of the solution? 25% R and 25% S, simply dividing it by two but then we have to take everything back to consideration. To get 100%, we have 25% of the S canceling R, 50% of the S that is pure, and that gives us 75 and 25. Let's do one more example because I know it's a little confusing. Say we have another molecule 
where R is equal to negative 37.5 degrees and S is equal to positive 37.5 degrees. Recognize that the absolute value is exactly the same, but in this case R happens to be negative S positive because they can change depending on the molecule. But I tell you that in a certain sample, the observed rotation of the sample is equal to negative 13.7. What is the enantiomeric excess? So let's set it up. Percent enantiomeric excess is equal to alpha sample over alpha pure. In this case, the sign is negative, so we know that it's going to be R. So it's percent enantiomeric excess of R. And then alpha sample is equal to negative 13.7. Alpha pure is equal to negative 37.5. Punch that into the calculator. The negatives cancel out. We're just looking for a percent value. Punch this into the calculator and you get 0 0.365. Don't forget to multiply this by 100% which gives us 36.5% enantiomeric excess. What does this mean for the total R and the total S? If we have 100% total, we know that we have 36.5% unopposed R, and the remainder, which is 100 minus 36.5, which is equal to 63.5 racemic, we have to split this in half because it's half R and half S. So divide by 2 gives me 31.75, which will round up to 31.8. And that gives me 31.8 of R and 31.8 of S. For a total solution of R, which is equal to the racemic portion and the enantiomeric excess portion, just add them up, and that is equal to 68.3%. And of course, 31.8% of S. For even more practice on this topic and every concept in Organic Chemistry 1 and 2, come join me in the Organic Chemistry Study Hall, where I not only provide you with much longer in-depth tutorials, but you'll also get a lot of shortcuts, tips, tricks, and practice, because you can never have enough practice. And of course, a Facebook group where you can post your daily tutoring questions to even when you understand the concept, if you get stuck on your homework, I'm always here to help. You can find details on my website at layerforsci.com join.